A mega drought is choking the western and southwestern regions of the U.S. On a visit to Hoover Dam, it doesn't take long to see just how low Lake Mead, the man-made reservoir for the dam, has fallen. In early June of 2022, a body was discovered in a barrel at the Leak Mead National Recreation Area just south of Las Vegas. The officers are solving the mystery of the man in a barrel found a week prior. It's being investigated as a homicide. A few weeks prior, in late April of 2022, an original intake valve used to provide water to the city of Las Vegas was exposed for the first time since 1971. For the first time ever, the valve was sucking only hot desert air when it should have been allowing water to flow into the city. Now, while these two occurrences might seem serious, there's a much bigger prize at stake, one that endangers the survival of close to 30 million people. Not the tourists who visit Las Vegas, but residents of California, Arizona, Nevada, and even Mexico who rely every day on Lake Mead and Hoover Dam for the most precious element of human life. The water crisis at Lake Mead is no surprise, We've known about it for years, but the serious questions remain. How do we get to this point? Who's responsible to fix it? And what, if anything, are they doing right now to take care and ensure that we're not cut off from the water forever? This is an exploration of life where it otherwise shouldn't belong. And what happens if we fail to correct the course? This is the story of the crisis at Lake Mead. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to go in for like an hour. Is it $25? No matter what, right? Okay. Well, I thought there'd be a lot more people, but... They're mostly going down on the Mojave side due to the lack of water. I'm here for that, so I'm trying to see the lack of water. I'm making a documentary about this, so... Oh, really? Yeah. So those six words, she just said it. Due to the lack of water. So what led us here? And who's responsible for this? Who's actually gonna step in and fix it? And those are the questions I'm hoping to explore and shed some light on in this short film. And I have to admit, I think the last time I had visited Lake Mead itself was as far back as 2008. And I remember being interested in history at the time, but you never heard anyone talk about the water level as much as they do these days. So I think to better understand the present situation, we have to take a look at the past. Okay, okay, hold on. We all know this part. This is the part where during the 1930s, the Hoover Dam was constructed. Lake Mead was created, and the water needs of what would become tens of millions of people in the southwestern United States were suddenly magically satisfied. But the real story starts before that, a long time before that. For thousands of years, the Paiute tribe called Southern Nevada home. Then in 1829, Spanish explorers discovered the Las Vegas Valley and its springs that bubbled up from the ground below. By the mid-1860s, more familiar names like John C. Fremont and Kit Carson had come through the area. And as more settlers came through and decided to stay in Las Vegas, the city's population exploded. By the early 1900s, plans to capture and harness both the water from the nearby Colorado River and the subsequent electricity a hydroelectric dam would provide had started to materialize. And in 1922, the U.S. government stepped in, forcing the seven states along the Colorado River to sign a pact sharing the water rights in the future, something that will play a big part in our story going forward. So by 1928, U.S. President Calvin Coolidge signed a bill authorizing the construction of the dam itself in what was known then simply as the Boulder Canyon Project Act. The cost of $165 million, or an absolutely mind-numbing $2.8 billion when adjusted for inflation, yeah, that's right. With inflation, the price of the Hoover Dam cost about as much as a modern-day NFL stadium to build. The real work on what would become the Hoover Dam in Lake Mead was finally ready to start. So there it is behind us, the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. One of the only places around Las Vegas where the wealthy can sail their boats, the kind of wealthy can rent a boat, and the rest of us can just go dip our feet in the water and get away from the casinos and all that glitz and glamour of the strip for a little while if we want to drive with the 45 minutes or so required. 
But what happens if this becomes a dead pool? What happens if the water doesn't come back? How did we get to this point? Who are the people in charge for making these decisions? What is a mega drought? So many questions that remain unanswered. We hope to explore what would the consequences be if this really did dry up. I'm Steven, I'm not leaving Las Vegas. And this is an exploration of the water crisis here at Lake Mead. Change your watering clock to one day a week or pay fines. This isn't kid stuff, it's the law. So obvious point aside, Las Vegas is in a desert, the Mojave Desert to be exact. And yes, it is very dry here, but is it more dry than usual? Well, new tonight, Nevada could be getting the squeeze next week when it comes to water use. California and Nevada are part. The first thing you notice is this white line. That's where the water used to be. Apparently, the answer to that is an emphatic yes. So when you hear the term mega drought, you sort of reject it at first. This must be just another one of those catchphrases, you know, someone came up with it in an order to scare us to get clicks on articles and views on videos. The harsh reality, however, is that in scientific circles, the term mega drought is used to describe a period lasting over 20 years where there are severely dry conditions. The first whispers of the term drought started to surface around the early 2000s in newspapers here in Nevada and as far back as the early 1990s in California. Historically, Lake Mead was filled up for the first time in 1935. Water levels were at 700 feet in February and 900 feet in December. But it's around the turn of the millennium that things start to go downhill. From 1,214 feet in January of 2000, the water kept up a steady decline until 2022, and its present day low of 1,050 feet this year. When you visit the lake, it's clearly evident that the lack of even just a few hundred feet of water makes a big impact on the area. Just take a look at the landscape. You can clearly see the old tree line where the flora used to be. In a sort of twisted look at what was and what could be, we can see down at the docks, fish coming up to be fed, boats moored and waiting for their owners. But all this begs the question as to what happened. And for that, we need to do some research on the population of the area. Probably no single area holding so much of charm and beauty and the good things of life as Southern California. Between 1940 and 2020, the population of three states came to encompass nearly 16% of the entire population of the United States of America. As Americans became upwardly mobile and were told to see the USA in your Chevrolet, they pushed westward, settling in California, Arizona, and Nevada in that order. Between 1940 to 2020, the population in these three states rose from 7.5 to 49 and a half million collectively, and water has had to keep pace every step of the way. Along with the population explosion came concerns over water use, but really what that's amounted to is a session of good old-fashioned Russian roulette, with states in the region constantly banking on there being enough snowpack and rainfall in the Rockies to keep the lake full and allow them to carry on without any restrictions. With Nevada and Arizona imposing various laws and restrictions over the years, efforts were at least being made to try and mitigate the resource. But what about California? Now wait, hold on, stop for a minute. My wife and I absolutely love California. San Diego is our go-to vacation spot, so consider this a disclaimer with what I have to say next. You see, while Nevada and Arizona have been fighting for years to conserve water, the Imperial Valley Irrigation District has remained the largest water user of the entire Colorado River. This district in California, as far back as 2010, was regularly overdrawing its share of water from Lake Mead. And back in 2010, the same Imperial Valley Irrigation folks saw fit to freshen the dead Salton Sea for no reason other than just to make it look better, just as Lake Mead was hitting an, at the time, all-time low level of water. So it seems to be these sorts of overruns and complete blind spots in the government that lead to poor water management at a time when an explosion in the population combined with the need to keep the water levels consistent meant that any little change to the system could throw it severely off balance. But then again, does anyone even care? In 2015, then California Governor Jerry Brown imposed statewide watering restrictions for the first time ever. Current Governor Gavin Newsom has doubled down on these with harsher measures in 2021 and even 2022. So at least they're doing something. Still, people either cannot work within the restrictions or simply don't care as evidenced by the fact that water use in the Golden State has actually increased from the year before. If politicians are doing the same thing they always did with poor results, always expecting a different outcome, isn't that the definition of insanity? Okay then you ask, what exactly does the future hold? 
A more recent plan, simply called the 500 Plus Plan, aims to keep an additional 500,000 acre-feet of water in Lake Mead every year. This is on top of the 533,000 acre-feet Nevada and Arizona have already committed to protecting. Now, that might sound really impressive until you learn that Lake Mead can hold a whopping 28.83 million acre-feet when full. The best option to many is desalinization. That's turning salt water from the ocean into drinkable water, if you weren't already aware. In May of 2022, a California panel unanimously rejected a plan. The reason? Environmental justice groups opposing the project for what it could do to the marine life along the coastal regions of the Pacific Ocean. However, not all hope is lost. If the 500 plus plan does move forward, it would keep things in check, at least for a little while until 2026, when hopefully cooler heads can prevail. We can formulate a plan that doesn't involve what environmentalists claim would be the culling of marine wildlife, and we can finally find a solution to keep the water flowing and the life in the desert constantly blooming. So final thoughts on Hoover Dam and Lake Mead. You know, if over 100 years ago, some amazing engineers could draw up plans for the Hoover Dam and facilitate life in this area. I'm confident that nearly 100 years later, we can solve the problem and the crisis at hand. But it's gonna take a lot. It's gonna take a lot of ingenuity, a lot of engineering, and a lot of creative thinking from people who might not be motivated to think a certain way until the lives and livelihoods of nearly 30 million people could very well possibly be on the line in time. One thing's for certain, this place here is a rite of passage for people to come to Las Vegas it's a fantastic experience to see nature, get out, and actually enjoy the wildlife of the area. And I urge you to come down and see it. If you've lived here, you've never visited, shame on you. But if you're a visitor that comes all the time, either way, come out and see it. So whether or not this gets solved in one year, two years, or 10 years, I'm sure there's hope for the future because I can't be a hopeless kind of guy when it comes to this sort of stuff. But what about you? What do you think? If you guys are just browsing through this video, make sure to subscribe. That would be fantastic. It would be a damn good thing for you to do. See what I did there? Uh, but uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. My name is Steven. I'm not leaving Las Vegas. Until we see you next time from beautiful, fantastic Lake Mead and Hoover Dam. Look at the camera. We say three, two, one, click. Three, two, one, and click.